uh, the next startup to present to be presented is Streambed. And Jenna, whenever you're ready, we may start. Awesome. Hi, guys. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. So first of all, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm very excited to present to you today uh, Streambed. So Streambed is a project that uh, myself, my co-founder, uh, Joseph Fischella, and Michael Casey have been working on for the last two and a half years. So the problem we're solving is that all the different versions of videos on the internet have value, there, but they are uncorrelated. So if we were to take this webinar and present it on, on YouTube or on, on the multiple different platforms that we could put it out on, um, that now creates five different versions of the same video. If we were to take all the contributors, funders, sponsors, talent, event, uh, event hosts, and add them and have them distribute them across all of their channels, we now have 25 different versions of essentially what is the same video. Then you add in all the different things that make the internet cool, which are GIFs, compilations, clips, TikToks, uh, TikTok sounds, memes, etc. And all of those then create additional uh, depth into uh, different versions of the exact same video. As we've talked about before, uh, right now the internet is all about accounts. It's estimated that the average human being has about 90 different accounts online. Um, I checked, I have about 180. You probably have, you as tech people probably have very similar amounts. And unfortunately, uh, that leads to lots of different problems. It leads to hacking, it leads to uh, uh, data problems. And so we have created StreamEd. StreamEd uses the APIs of different social media platforms to post to those platforms on the user's behalf and then allow brands a passive yet impactful way to uh, compensate consumers directly for the analytics of how something about them performed on their feed. So uh, an example of that would be a, uh, I walk down the street, I take a picture of myself in my Nike hoodie. I upload through Streambed to Instagram and I tag Nike and I tag any of my friends who may be in the photo. And then Nike is given the opportunity to pay me directly for the publisher level analytics of how my friends received that content. So this is what our app looks like. Um, this is our, the consumer side of our app. You can see it as kind of like a, a Uber's rider driver app. Uh, this is currently built. We bootstrapped our team to build this. It was released in July. And then we're currently working on the corporate version of our app. This is the SaaS. Uh, this is a, a traditional SaaS model um, with uh, corporate campaigns. So you can see over here that uh, this is different content that is created um, for the Show Your Bronze campaign. And then companies are afforded the opportunity to pay humans directly for the analytics of content that they've actually already published. This is linked directly to ROI, uh, could be linked to verified purchasers and engagement rates. We use the blockchain to verify all of this information. Um, we use the metadata of who, what, when, where, and with whom um, all of this information is created. We upload it to the blockchain, uh, to the Flow blockchain, which is a public blockchain from 2013. It's originally a fork of Bitcoin, specifically designed for metadata. It's lightweight, it's fast, and it's very, very cheap. Um, the lead architect of the Flow blockchain, Joseph Fischella, happens to be our CTO as well. Time. On the team, um, myself, and my co-founder, Michael Casey, um, met in 2018, uh, and then we met the rest of our team shortly after that. Um, so for our, uh, these are our milestones. We graduated from the Creative Destruction Lab um, in 2020, and uh, we've now built a verified app on a burn of just under 5K a month. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. Sorry, Thank I went a little bit over time there. Uh, no problem. I think um, today somebody over uh, supersede, like somebody not, over the past three minutes. Who would like to be the first one? Yeah, very quick question here, Jenna. Henry on here. So um, uh, I think I see you, you have a page that link, let's say LinkedIn, YouTube, let's say Instagram and Facebook. Uh, first mm -hmm. question is, do you need approval or the API to plug them in? That's the first question. The follow-up question is, if the answer is no, why would I need to go to like an IG or Facebook if you like, you know, if I can see everything just on sort of the aggregator of all the information or platform from you guys? Thanks. Uh, so yes, yes, we do use the APIs um, of the different social media platforms. We have, our team has very deep relationships with each of these. Uh, Google's verification process, for example, for our app usually takes about six weeks and our app was approved within 10 days. So yes, we do need access to, um, to the different social media platforms, um, but we're, uh, we're aiming to, to, um, to obviously push away from that as we integrate more and more platforms. We're aiming to integrate as many as we can. We're live on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Zoom right now. And then uh, we're adding LinkedIn this month as well. 
Yeah, so the follow up, just want to make sure you understand. So the follow up is, let's say if they approve you, right? And then if I got all these platforms that I can access in one, like in StreamBed, why do I need to still go to IG again? Why do I need to- Because that's where the communities of humans are that you want to interact with. We don't want to change anything about the viewing experience for the average consumer. Um, my communities are still on Instagram. My communities are still on LinkedIn. The user transition problem um, is why we chose to be a tool and not our own platform. If that makes sense. So whatever the co next coolest platform is, as new platforms come along, we can always add integrations for them as well. No, thank you. And that also proves a transition to uh, different Web3 business models that are being experimented on by many other blockchain companies. So we're aiming to add blockchain-based social media platforms too. About decentralized media platforms, you mean? Yes, Jen? Yeah, so we're facilitating the transition from Web2 to Web3. Okay, thank you. Who would like to be the next one? Gina, it's Kelly here. Hi. How, how, how would you in users, how many active users you have now? Uh, so we're in beta on the consumer side of the app. Um, we're just over 100 users in our beta since July. Um, that's with no marketing. Those are, you know, friends and family who are on the, on the app, actual uh, testers that we're, we've brought onto the app to, to make it uh, viable. We're in the process of building the corporate side of the app and the narrative around uh, being paid for your data by your favorite brands that you already like is, is a really compelling narrative to drive user growth in Q2 of this year. Thank you. Next one. So do you have any kind of uh, structured monetization process which cannot be duplicated? Uh, so we believe that our status as a tool allows us to, because we can integrate with many different social media platforms, even if we're, you know, uh, uh, access is revoked in, in one place, then we're able to sort of move to somewhere else. Um, our proprietary IP is, is our uh, blockchain based normalizing system. So in, in, uh, we, the, the users create the data and then it is encrypted. There's actually a key system that is assigned to every new user when they join. There's actually a, a Bitcoin wallet and a Flow wallet created for them on the back end. Um, as, as consumers get a little bit more comfortable with having uh, uh, blockchain, uh, well, blockchain forward sort of access uh, as, as society moves forward, then we can turn those switches on and enable um, humans to be paid in Bitcoin, compensate in Bitcoin, for example, if they wanted that. Um, that's our proprietary IP is the encryption process. It's a double key encryption um, that we can't see any of our users' data. So we are very privacy first. Um, it's uploaded to the Flow blockchain and then it's decrypted when uh, a user has the right keys to be able to see the information. Who is your biggest competitor? Uh, so right now we have two categories of competitors. One on the Web2 side would be like Hootsuite, Sprout Social, your typical social posting um, posting apps. And then on the uh, Web3 side, it's it's Web3 based social media companies like uh, Voice, Minds.com, and uh, uh, Akasha is another one. So those are your, uh, your advantage, companies. your advantage uh, on them. Our advantage on them is that we don't actually uh, encourage or we, we, we don't require someone to change anything about their consumer behavior. Those communities have trouble growing, uh, have trouble growing users because users have to leave Facebook or leave Instagram to go to voice or to go to others. In integrating with all of them, we actually feel that we can, we can prove or provide that transitionary role from one to the next. Thank you so much, Jenna. The time Thank is 